Hello everyone, it's DA here. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you are doing amazing. Today I'm bringing you guys a recap of Deathstream 103 to cover what was revealed and also what we can expect to see in the next update. Maybe the next one or maybe the one in 2018. So to quickly get things out of the way, Hydra Prime trailer will hopefully be arriving next year. It was said that they were struck between a tight timeline for either Hydra Prime or Mirage Prime and since Mirage Prime was coming out so soon, they ended up going with Mirage. And now I can see the logic in that, however I know a lot of people were not happy about that. So hopefully we can see Hydra Prime trailer, if not towards the end of the year, maybe at least at the beginning of 2018. But we should be seeing Hydra soon, I know that for a fact. Now another mention of things to see were also buildable obstacle courses in the clan dojo, they've mentioned that in several dev streams. And we also got a preview of the layout and see how it's going to function. However, it might not be coming in the next build, mainly because they are still working on some of the economy. And this thing right now, the way it is and that the current state, it will be very, very expensive for every clan. So they are working on that economy and make sure that it is not too expensive or too consuming that people will just throw it in the back burner. Now, speaking of next year, the clan kingpin system is hopefully going to arrive in 2018 and they hope to also have Umbra quest before Tenokan. I don't know how they're going to do that, but that is one of their promises. So finger crossed on that as far as Umbra and also fingers crossed on the Clan Kingpin because I would love to see that system as well. Now moving on from hopefuls to the next update, we were shown a good preview of what was in the other door on the Lasset. Now this room will serve as a Tenno personal area where you can display your favorite loadout, place decorations such as fish tanks, a diorama of different tile sets with multiple options to choose from, shells for some of your trophies and collection of items, and also a music box to play your favorite Warframe soundtracks. So those are some of the things that a lot of people have asked for. So I'm guessing that is why they reserve this room and just say, you know what? We're gonna give you this room so you can place all those extra things, all those amazing glyphs, all those incredible and amazing dongles you can put all of those in this room and I'm glad that they added shelves as well. So that is a good thing on when it comes to maybe quality of life. I don't know how you want to categorize that, but that's a good thing regardless. Now, in case of the fish tank and the music tracks, fishes will be based on the ones that you currently have in your inventory and there will also be only small fishes. So you can get any of those large fishes you caught. So I'm sorry about that. I know a lot of people wanted the big, large, giant fish in there, but this will only be for the small fishes. Now, as far as the music is concerned, you will have to scan multiple music fragments for different planets, and this will help you complete the musical tracks, and you only need to scan four of them, I believe. So you scan four on each planet, and that will give you a certain track, part of the Warframe soundtrack. So that is also a great thing. I don't know how that is going to work in the dojo, if it's going to mean that everybody can scan and contribute, I'm not sure if it or if it is just going to be 100% free and unlocked. But we're going to see that when it launches in the game. Now, moving on to the planes. The first thing that I know a lot of players were expecting, and some things, of course, a lot of us were not expecting to see, this is, of course, going to be the display of the different Eidolons. Now, we got to see this skill comparison between the Terralist versus the Megalist, and it was incredibly large, and it was huge. Now, when the monsters got introduced, you will have to figure out ways to lure out different monsters, maybe the Terralist or the different uh, Megalist. I don't know if they have a different names. However, it could also be something dealing with a lure color, different Vumbalist uh, colors, or you know, buying certain items in the game, getting certain items from Quill. I hope it's not going to be something that you will have to grind for. Fingers crossed on that. But those are some of the ways that you will be able to get or bring a lot of those out. Of course, DE will bring us a fully polished thing. They said smarter players will be able to figure it out. But hopefully it is not something too tricky and something too complicated. One thing that I also find that is possible is the different energy colors on these Eidolons could mean their elemental weakness. Green could be toxin, red could be heat. And of course, the silver one could be the radiation that we have on the Terralist. Now, if a lot of you take a look at this clip right here, you can see that that is just so obvious. Now, of course, the only thing that will be different is 
if DE makes a different kind of change on it. But I think that is also quite cool and very unique considering that we're going to have to take them down using different elemental combos. Now, this is just my guess, but we can see a lot of those and we will see what the final verdict is when it comes out in the future updates. Now, last on the coverage of Korra, her abilities and the goals and also the planes. Now, Korra, just like Equinox, will be able to switch between Impact, Puncture, and Slash, which is great. Her first ability will be a Quick Whiplash, and this one will be able to hit enemies. Her second one is like Harrow's Chain, but it will also be able to group enemies and pull them together like Volbans Bastille, and that's also a great thing. Plus, this one will deal damage over time, so I'm guessing this will scale maybe with duration or scale maybe with power strength. Now, her third ability, which is also going to be a really cool one for a lot of you who love cats, this will be her ability where she summons the Kavat, and she summons the Kavat that deals damage based on the selection of IPS. If you were in an impact mode, the Kavat's damage will be impact, and if you were on a puncture or slash mode, it will be correspondent of that damage style. Now, her second ability on an enemy, if you cast that, it will tell the Kavat who to attack. So if you cast it on a high priority target, that will be the one that a Kavat will attack. Now, I'm still not quite sure if this will synergize if you already have a Kavat equipped in your loadout as part of your companion. If they're going to do the same thing, if this Kavat will control what your Kavat does, I'm not quite sure. However, one thing that I will say is also incredible is the fact that you will be able to customize the colors of Korra's Kavat and also mod it, which also leads me to the point where I'm starting to think maybe you will just have to customize and mod Korra's Kavat instead of ringing your own Kavat. So that might be the possibilities of what DE is trying to do with that. Now, I will also say they mentioned having two Kavats, but I'm not sure if this will be added in the build and scaled based on power strength or if they will be bringing this in a form of an augment. And also, during the gameplay, she was shown using both the Tano shotgun, the Grenier dual side arm called the Grenier Uzi, they still don't have a name for it, or maybe they have one, I just didn't see it, and also the Fan Blaze as well that a lot of people have been waiting for. Now, the Ghoul's release will be part of a bounty mission, and as you guys can see, there are so many things to look forward to in the next update. It's going to be really fun. A lot of you are going to have one. Hopefully, this will be a lot much better than Operation Plague Star. Now, I can't wait to see the entire squad of cats. I know some people will just have four players or, you know, like some people who I know within the community, they will have a eight Cora raid. And I cannot wait to see that as well and see how that uh, functions, you know, dealing out bleed procs or even how it functions with the IPS update and the IPS changes. And in addition to everything, you will also be able to visit other players let's set, and that is also really going to be a cool thing. I cannot wait to see that. I know this update is going to be really huge. It's going to be large. Hopefully, it's not too large that it will be more than three or four gigs, maybe around two gigs, so you guys can prepare for it. Well, that will be it for this recap. That will be it for this video. Let me know what you think about this proposed changes, this updates, and also if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more cool and also for more Warframe content. And as always, it is DSI and I'll see you guys on the next one.